Hey gang, and welcome to today's video where we are going to quickly cover Salesforce variables, what they are, and how you might use them in your flows. So first, what even is a flow variable? The concept of variables actually goes beyond flows and beyond Salesforce. If you're coding Apex, JavaScript, and I'm sure other languages that I don't understand, variables exist. And they work in a very similar way to Salesforce flows in that it's basically digital Tupperware. A variable is a container, and you can have empty variables that don't contain anything, or you can have variables that contain values. Now the variable piece, which makes it true to its name, is that the value in that container can change at any point. So what does this look like if we had to draw it out? Let's say I have a value of 100. Doesn't matter what it represents, 100 apples, 100 cats, 100 dogs, but either way, let's say I have this value that I need to use in my flow for whatever reason and I'm not wed to that number. Maybe I'll wind up changing that value to 1,000 or 40 trillion. Before I can do anything with that value, I need to assign it to a variable. Once we have our variable, we're ready to start gearing up with flow. Now, we just looked at a number variable, but what other types of variables can we have in a flow? As you already saw, we can have number variables that store just that. Number variables can have decimal points, and in addition to completely swapping out your number value, you can also perform mathematical equations on them, like if you wanted to add 27,000 to the value that's here. Same for currency, more or less. Up next, you have Booleans. Now, if this word is new to you, but you know how a checkbox works, then you know how Booleans work. Imagine true, meaning that a hypothetical checkbox has been checked. If that box isn't checked, you would assign that Boolean to have a false value. Text is another good one, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Your value is a text string. Now, in my experience, these are among the most common variables that you'll use in Flow, especially if you're just getting started. But because it's an education video, I would be remiss not to mention the other three variable types, which are Pickless, Multi-Select, and Apex. Now, to be honest with you, I've yet to use these in my flows. And frankly, I don't get how Picklist and Multiselect are supposed to work compared to choice sets, which are currently only available in screen flows. But we won't get into that in this video because I do want to keep this brief. There are two more variables that you should know, record variables and collection variables. We'll get into those in a separate video because they're super important. You're bound to use them a ton. And frankly, they deserve their own dedicated five minutes. All right, going back to this thing. If you've been admining for a while, you might be looking at this slide and thinking, see, those look a lot like field options when I'm configuring Salesforce objects. And that's not totally off base. The type options are similar. And because of that, I think it's a great thing to think about for the purpose of familiarizing yourself with the variable concept. They don't function all that differently from Salesforce fields, even though they are a completely different thing. Now let's see what variables look like in Flow. Here I have a schedule triggered flow, which isn't all that important for you to know because variables are available in all of the flow types. But here, let's say I want to create a variable to count the number of opportunity records that process through this loop. I'll link to another video that explains how loops work, but for this lesson, just know that my pink get records element is going to search Salesforce for every relevant opportunity that it can find. Then that loop element will process each opportunity one by one. Let's create a number variable for counting those opportunities. I'll click new resource, name my variable, and select the number type. You can see by default, my number will have two decimal places. I'll just change that to zero. And if I were to hit done right now, this variable would be an empty number variable. But in this case, in order to be able to add and do that mathematical calculation, I'll wanna make the default to zero. Okay, now I have my variable, and at this present moment, the value of that variable is zero. In my loop, let's add an assignment element. If you're new to assignments, this element is basically asking me to choose a variable and to then decide what the value of that variable will be. So in the variable entry, I'll find that counter variable that we just created. I'll set my operator to add instead of equals, and we'll add one. So let's just take a quick step back. Why exactly did I do this again? 
If this get records element finds 20 opportunities, then for each opportunity that goes through the loop, I want to add one to whatever value is in my counter variable. So as each record iterates, that variable is going up by one. And by the end of the loop, the variable's value should equal the number of opportunities that go through it. Now, just to show you all that it actually works, we are going to debug this flow. I changed the criteria in my get records element so that it would pull in more opportunities for the sake of this demo. So let's hit debug. Okay, so what's happening here? My get records element has successfully found opportunities that are open. So my next loop element is going to iterate through all of those opportunities. What you're seeing here are those opportunity IDs. And because I went through and counted manually, there are 37 of them. That means by the time we get to the end of this loop and the last record has processed, the value of my counter variable should equal 37. So let's scroll down. Let's find that last assignment element for counting our opportunities. And you can see here that the result is that our opportunity counter equals 37. And because I should have done this first, let's scroll back up and see what our value for that variable started with by clicking our first count opportunities assignment. So here you're seeing that the assignment is adding one to that variable and the result is one, which means that our opportunity counter started with a value of zero. So I hope this video was helpful in quickly explaining to you how variables work in Salesforce. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And to know when more videos like this come out, especially if you're new to flows, please subscribe. Thanks.